Okay, so hi everybody. I'm Timothée Ravier, and I'm from the Chorus team at Red Hat. I'm Sherin Khoury, and I'm from Red Hat as well in the customer focus team. Hello, I'm Alessandro from the uh, multi edge team in Red Hat. And hello, I'm Christian. I'm on the OKD Streams team uh, in the OpenShift Arc at Red Hat. All right, so we're here to talk about how we are building Kubernetes distributions and doing that the cloud native way using OKD, using uh, pipelines, using Tekton pipelines. Uh, so what's first, let's start with what's OKD. For those of you who don't know, it's a sister distribution of OpenShift, which is a Kubernetes distribution. And we're not just bundling Kubernetes. We're bringing a lot of things on top, so one of the main things that we bring with OKD is that we bring the operating system as well. So OKD is based on Fedora Chorus. And so when you set up an OKD cluster, you set up everything at the same time. Set up the system, you set up the Kubernetes, you set up the applications on top, the operators, all very nice things to make developing uh, on top of Kubernetes much easier. And you manage the thing as a single entity, and you update your cluster, everything at the same time. You update the system as well when you update your cluster. So this is a very nice experience of a managed uh, system coherent Kubernetes distribution. And that's the main thing about OKD. So OKD is a community project. It's uh, as always here, as everything here is open source. And so far, it's been based on Fedora Chorus. So the, cur the core is an essentially of OKD was the operating system was Fedora Chorus, which is a Linux distribution. It's based on Fedora. It's an official Fedora variant. And the main thing behind Fedora Chorus is that we have automatic updates. So we try and bring uh, new content, updates, fixes, security fixes, and new features all the time as they get in inside Fedora, and you get them. The, the basis between um, uh, the, benis, uh, the, the, the benefits underneath Fedora Chorus is uh, that you're using an immutable infrastructure. So you are doing provisioning via ignition. You write a config. You want what you ha want to have on your system. And you from the first boot, you get a system provisioned, configured uh, as you like with the thing, with your containers and uh, your con configuration, your containers. And that's what we've been using in OKD. Fedora Chorus itself is available on a lot of platforms, a lot of architectures, a lot of cloud platforms. Uh, you get a list of here. Uh, I'm not going to repeat all of those. We have almost support for uh, four architectures right now, so x86, of course, AR64, S390X, and PowerPC coming real soon. So let's take a quick step back and look at the enterprise Linux uh, ecosystem. So, if you look at distribution that we have, we have Fedora, which is upstream, which is changing rapidly, which has uh, a lot of uh, new features getting in, new changes, uh, experiments sometimes, things that may or may not work, uh, all of those kind of things. And this is where the community experiments and do things. It's where we learn new code, we learn new software, we learn new features. And that's Fedora. Then we get now into things into center stream, which is a shared space, which is where we want to try and define where the next version of enterprise software, enterprise Linux is going to go, which feature do we actually want to have there, uh, which changes, etc. And then finally, you've got like the Red Hat product, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and all the other variants, uh, which is product, so it's something made by Red Hat and, 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 and sold. And so, but what about Chorus then? Where it does all of this, uh, where it does all of our Fedora Chorus, Red Hat Chorus edition fit here in, in the picture? And so, so far we had been, we had only two. We had Fedora Chorus, which is based on Fedora, as it said. We had the RHEL Chorus, which is based on RHEL, which is part of OpenShift. And we are now introducing a third one, which is Central Stream Chorus, which is the version in the middle. So it's keeping the same ID, it's keeping the idea of having a minimal operating systems uh, with uh, just what's needed, the container stacks, uh, the, uh, the what's needing for Kubernetes, and putting that on top of Central Stream. So the 
uh, just the ecosystem looks like that right now, which is like we get Fedora OS, the, the, the version uh, specifically for running containers on top of Fedora, the one sent to a stream chorus, uh, which is based on center stream, and the final uh, Red Enterprise Linux chorus for OpenShift. So, uh, OKD on FCOS has existed for, thank you, a couple of years now. And uh, basically, Fedora CoreOS is two to three years ahead of Red CoreOS. And that leads to some situations sometimes where features land in FCOS and they make some OKD components break. And the maintainers of those OKD and OpenShift components don't really have the bandwidth to look at it. And basically, that's really sad. So if we look at OKD on SCOS, it's a win-win situation because our uh, SCOS is going to be about six months ahead of RHEL, CoreOS. And so basically, the components team really benefit from running their components on SCOS because they get a really early signal of what's going to happen when they uh, land the new RHEL CoreOS for OpenShift. And we are living in really interesting times for this because infrastructure changes are and features are coming really very quickly. And we want that as early as possible in the software. So that means that we need to deliver the OS now faster. This wasn't the case a few years ago. If you think about the last version, the OpenShift version 4.13, we've delivered this nearly in the same time frame as RHEL 9. And that was the first time. We're still learning. And that's where this team, OKD Streams, comes in. Uh, we here uh, and other colleagues are not from the same team. We, we just gather together to make this OKD Streams. Our goal is not to build OKD. Our goal is to build the tools that would be needed by the, the community to build OKD. And that means OKD from the grounds up. So starting from the core OS, any flavor of core OS, whether it's CentOS or something else you want to test, to the OKD components, release, and later operators that run on OKD. Why not also go crazy and test changing some component of OKD by something of your own to experiment? So when we started on this journey of building these tools, we had an easy option, which was to use Prow CI. I don't need to introduce Prow CI to you. It's beyond uh, needing any pitches. Uh, it's developer-centric, and the, the problem with it was that the Prow CI specific that we use for building OKD on FCOS is not accessible to the community. And that's why we chose to uh, uh, switch to Tekton. Tekton has, uh, uh, firstly, is cloud native, and secondly, it has a very, very powerful and uh, active community around it. You just you can see it just by looking at the uh, quantity of tasks that are ready for you to use in the Tekton hub. And also, since it's a cloud native, all of these resources that you usually use, like secrets, volumes, um, config maps, they are ready for you to use and they come with really low uh, uh, learning curve to us. And that's why we switched to it. So here I'm going to introduce two of the pipelines that we have. Uh, the first one here that we're seeing is the one that builds the core OS. It can run on any uh, Kubernetes distribution, so including kind if you want to. All you need to do is clone the repo that you have on, on, on the bottom there, uh, use Customize to apply everything to the cluster, install uh, Tekton uh, a controller, and you have everything ready to uh, build CoreOS. Uh, most of the tasks that you see here are based on uh, a container that we call the COSA container, the CoreOS Assembler container. It's basically just a toolkit 
around building core OSs. So it comes with everything that you need, uh, any wrapper around RPM OS 3, uh, building, testing, uh, uh, ex uh, building extensions. So we build extensions uh, to the live ISO, to bare metal, to OpenStack, and that's uh, available for you to use on S3. Uh, the next uh, pipeline that we see here is the pipeline that we use to uh, release OKD. Uh, before we get into that uh, today, so far, the OKD components are still built in the PROW system, but Alessandro is, is actively working with the other colleagues as well to deliver an OKD payload pipeline, so you'll soon be able to build those components also in Tecton. Um, and uh, so this, this uh, uh, pipeline is uh, fairly easy. It, uh, it uh, just uh, queries the release controller on the Prow CI cluster to get uh, the tag and digest of a valid and verified release and basically signs the release, mirrors the components, uh, generates all the release notes uh, and stuff that we need and uh, uh, updates the channels so that you can uh, as well upgrade uh, your clusters. And next, I'm going to hand it off to Alessandro. Thanks. OK, so <laughs> what Sharin introduced so far are the pipelines that we used to build CentOS Stream Core OS, uh, the base OS. We are working on the pipeline to build the payload itself. And uh, well, what triggers the pipelines today? Uh, we are still using um, Tecton as a base, uh, that, and Tecton um, provides an extension controller um, with a few custom resources under the group triggers.tecton.dev, for which you can be able to essentially um, define in an event-based fashion how to trigger your pipelines. Uh, the main resources are the event listeners and the triggers. The event listeners will essentially expose an HTTP handler uh, where the uh, event, event producer can send requests with a payload and the, and the information about what the event is and how it is made of. And triggers instead defines what we want to do based on that event. They are made of three other resources, which are trigger bindings, trigger templates, and interceptors. Trigger bindings allows you to map essentially the data from the request payload to the uh, pipeline run that we are going to create. Uh, trigger templates defines the pipeline runs, the task runs, the Tecton object that you want to create. And the interceptors are uh, a more active way for defining ways to either map or filter whether to run or not your pipeline runs. Events can be whatever. They can be events from a Git repository. They can be events like periodics. What we currently do is to run essentially a periodic job for building the base OS. And what we want to go to in the next steps is to leverage these triggers in order to also support multi-arch images that um, to, uh, the multi-arch images for CentOS Stream Core OS. What's the problem there? Uh, actually, what you can do now is to run the pipelines within any cluster architecture. There is no specific, ar uh, no specific ar no architecture specific bindings that would avo avoid you from running the pipeline into another architecture, let's say at least for AMD64 and AMD64 at first. Uh, the ESCOS manifest in the OpenShift OS repository from which we get the manifest, the configuration for CentOS Stream Core OS, have all, the, all, all, if any, possible architecture-specific information that you need to build for that specific architecture. And what you get from the pipelines are separate cloud boot images, one for each architecture, essentially, and for cloud provider, or ISOs for bare metal, um, and separate container-native images uh, which are single arch container images. What we want to do is to have a unique manifest list container native Im image. And we want to achieve this by using triggers because Tecton does not provide any way to add node selectors, node affinities, uh, and select which nodes you should use in your pipeline to run uh, your task run. Um, 
you can do that only at the level of pipeline runs or task runs, which are the instances of the abstract pipeline that Shireen described so far. Um, and so the simple way is to just run two, two times, let's say, for two architectures, the pipeline from the Chrome trigger that I was talking before. But at that time, you continuously get single arch container images that you want to compose into a manifest list. We want to leverage intercept an interceptor and another um, even listener, essentially, by feeding a config map each time a um, build is successful for a given architecture, storing that this into um, an array or, a, mm, let's say, into an array, and uh, trigger the even listener so that the interceptor uh, defined within it can understand whether it's time to build and compose the manifest list. When it's time, so when all the uh, architecture image, um, the single architecture images have been built, the compose manifest list pipeline will trigger and uh, compose the manifest list from the single arch ones. Still talking about next steps, we are working on having um, of, you know, on introducing the Fedora Core OS layering approach into CentOS Stream Core OS because at, uh, as of now, what you get when you um, get CentOS Stream Core OS 9 is a no KD specific CentOS Stream Core OS 9 that has packages and configurations within it which are specific to, um, to, to OKD. Uh, what we want to go to is a model for which we become, say, first tier providers of, a cent of the CentOS Stream Core OS based images and we also consume at the OKD level, let's say, um, the, these base images by using, um, by extending, extending them through a container file like the one that you see in the bottom of, the, of this slide and adding layers, packages, configuration, anything which is specific to OKD and um, to be then published with the OKD release pipeline that we were discussing before. This means that we get to a model for which we have this base image and any second tire provider can consume it and uh, do whatever they want with it. We, uh, you can essentially leverage any of the services offered by RPM OS3 with the robustness given by the CentOS uh, stream repositories and deliver them to the users uh, in using the container registries as transport mechanism. Um, we are, as Shane was saying before, we have are doing all, all of this work uh, to be cloud native, to be Kubernetes native, and if you want to try out uh, the, our pipelines, you can run them locally into any kind of Kubernetes clusters, uh, for example, on kind. What we do usually is to, uh, at production grade level, is to run it into uh, hosts provided by the MOC Alliance in a collaboration that Christian will now introduce. Yeah, so we have our build farm on the MOC Alliance, which is the Mass Open Cloud or Massachusetts Open Cloud Alliance. Uh, MassOpen.cloud is their website. And uh, we have started a, essentially a, a little joint venture, a collaboration with them uh, from the OKD Working Group, the CentOS Stream Cloud SIG, or the CentOS Cloud SIG, um, the OKD Streams team within OpenShift, and then uh, the MOC Alliance. And the MOC Alliance is a research-focused cloud, an educational-focused cloud. So uh, what they essentially provide is infrastructure for their students. That it's, it's a group of university that, and, and other research-related projects that make up this alliance. And uh, they use it for a whole lot of things. And their main thing is providing the infrastructure for their students, their their folks to, to run uh, things on experiments or anything really. Um, and they essentially approached us uh, needing um, the ability to spin up OKD clusters on their infrastructure on demand. So their students could spin up a cluster uh, very quickly. And uh, we've been working on, on enabling this. Oh, <laughs> I hope you've been hearing me. Uh, we've been working on enabling this um, and really well, they were uh, donated, I think, about 2,000 servers, and they racked them up uh, somewhere and uh, yeah, turned on the power and uh, gave us uh, an IP range, essentially. Um, 
to, to go crazy and ena enable this thing. And under the hood, what, what they did is uh, they put a, an open stack like API, it's called ESI, uh, Elastic Secure Infrastructure, on top of their uh, bare metal pools to manage those bare metal uh, machines. So what we've ended up is uh, essentially implementing a new platform for, uh, for the OpenShift installer. We are actually uh, aiming at uh, using the agent-based installer to do this, which is kind of the new way of, of installing uh, OpenShift on, uh, on really any kind of platform and specifically on, on uh, bare metal platforms. So they provide us with the bare metal infrastructure with an on-demand uh, API that we can provision nodes with and then uh, it's essentially our task to run the OKD installer and spin up a cluster. Um, and we've been, not only have we enabled this platform, we have uh, also been given uh, a built farm cluster to use ourselves. So essentially, we are now uh, homed at, uh, on the mass open cloud. Um, our cluster was actually down last week for maintenance and it was brand, it's brand new, so we, have, we haven't configured it uh, properly with, with everything. Uh, but I think we're almost there again, so uh, build infrastructure is almost up again. Uh, and we'll essentially use that as our official build farm for the CentOS Stream CoreOS uh, artifacts, which is the OS tree native container image, um, which is the OS tree shipped as a container image. It includes the kernel and everything, but you can actually manipulate it uh, and, and change it like, like a container. Um, and we just saw that earlier on this slide. Um, the CoreOS layering. So you import the OS tree uh, with a from a directive here and then you run RPM OS tree within the container uh, and that spits out another OS tree native container image which you can also run as a container or you can actually um, tell RPM OS tree to rebase your whole operating system to that OS tree that is, was shipped within the container image. Um, so lots of interesting stuff. We are now uh, part of the MOC alliance with, uh, with CentOS Stream and uh, OKD. And really, not only our build farm is gonna be there, there's also gonna be a secondary build farm or cluster for OKD working group members. Um, so anyone who, who's participating in the OKD working group and has some experiments to run, they'll be able to request uh, a namespace on, on that secondary build farm cluster. And then even more importantly, uh, the ephemeral clusters, which is end-to-end uh, -end testing, We'll be able to run end-to-end -end tests uh, on that platform. And also, obviously, since they're ephemerally uh, or available on demand, that's also what, uh, what the MOC university students will use, uh, uh, spinning up a cluster and then uh, having it run as for as long as they need it for their project and then tearing it down again. So to give you um, an entire picture of the whole cake, it's all just pieces of cake here, um, multiple layers. So the uh, base layer, the infrastructure, is Massachusetts Open Cloud and OpenStack. It's not a full OpenStack thing. It's an OpenStack API that actually manages bare metal nodes. Um, then we uh, use OKD's uh, agent-based installer to set up clusters. On top of those clusters, and especially for our build farms, we, we use Git sec ops uh, with Argo CD, and that runs our Tecton pipelines, and yeah, that's, the, that's what we run. That's uh, essentially our product, uh, our, yeah, what we own uh, as the OKD Streams team. We make the OKD pipelines um, that produces the OKD artifacts. We don't necessarily own the, the operating systems uh, therein. We, we just own the build system, and we want to really enable a kind of self-service. It, it must be super easy for anyone to replicate a build or to, to change something up, replace an RPM or add additional RPMs and run an RPM OS tree compose yourself. And this is with CoreOS Assembler, and this is what our pipeline does. So you can create your own RPM OS tree based uh, operating system um, yourself or run a, a created derivation of Fedora CoreOS or CentOS Stream CoreOS, or even if you're a paying Red Hat customer, RHEL CoreOS. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's a really flexible and powerful tool, um, and toolkit, really. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to uh, you using it, giving us feedback, and um, 
especially yeah, telling us what, what, what's not great yet, uh, what needs to change. Um, and also, obviously, we, we'd like to hear what, what works well, what you like. Um, so uh, this is essentially the, the call for action. Um, if you're a developer, you might want to uh, try OKD on top of SCOS, CentOS Stream Core OS, because it's more stable um, than, than the Fedora variant. Just because, as Shirin mentioned, the kernel isn't so far ahead uh, as, um, as the Fedora one. Um, for staging, if you already have an OpenShift cluster on your, uh, in your company and you want to kind of run a preview of what's going to come to OpenShift in six months or so, um, you can use a uh, center stream cluster for that. And then obviously for labs, for any kind of experiments, um, the students, uh, educational projects, open source community projects. Um, this is what we want to see. Uh, use OKD, really. Um, so with that, um, I think we're through and we can move to questions. So thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Not so shy. <laughs> There's a question. So, uh, maybe just push it. Uh, wasn't there a motivation behind, like, uh, why did you decide to go like this direction and did not like try to be more sustainable the way that you're doing with public cloud and other cloud? So you could like, you know, like, uh, build your service and then like break it down into what type of thing you like to do. Yeah, I, I think th there are probably multiple. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, wh why did we choose to go with uh, a bare metal based infrastructure to set this up instead of a public cloud? Um, and I think the reason is that we just have a really good connection to the MOC alliance. They need us to implement this and we need them for the free infrastructure, right? There's no, they, they don't, uh, yeah, they, they don't charge us for using this. Um, we, it's a, it's a pr pro quo essentially. And we, we just, like if, if there's a public cloud operator who who would give us those resources and say, look, you don't have to pay for it, and just do the work, we, we'd probably do that too. But this was just the first kind of uh, joint project uh, that we did in this way. And since, it's, since we're from the community side of, of OpenShift and MOC Alliance is, is an educational research project, um, that was just a perfect fit. Um, So um, Argo CD, oh yeah, um, question was, uh, why, do we, why do we have uh, Tecton on top of Argo CD? Why isn't it the same layer? Is that all right? Uh, so essentially Tecton, uh, the Argo CD, GitOps, um, which is added as a GitHub app to the repository, uh, it watches the contents of our GitOps repository and applies anything. It can be a Tecton resource or any other kind of resources. On the, on the cluster it's supposed to land on. So really the, the Argo uh, CD is a more agnostic controller for, for resources uh, in a GitOps way. So it's not just, but we do control the Tecton pipelines, uh, pipeline runs through Argo in, in that way. You can, in, oh, the question is, uh, can I use this to deploy microservices, um, my, my own microservices, right? Um, and, well, the question, uh, yes, you will be in the future. We are, uh, as I mentioned, still ramping up our, uh, our build farms and, and the community cluster on MOC, but once we have the MOC community cluster up, you'll be able, as an OKD working group member or an interested party uh, who presents themselves to the OKD uh, working group and says hello there, you'll be able to request a namespace and then use that to run your experiments. There's, we don't have any, any rules yet on how long these things can run and how compute uh, heavy they, they can be. Um, I guess if it's abused at some point, we'll, you know, we'll kick people out again, but we, we don't have any tenants yet and we're looking forward to our first tenants. And that's essentially, yeah, if, if they have something they wanna uh, prove out make a proof of concept or run an experiment, 
uh, the community built cluster would be the place. Yes. How many architectures are we building? Currently, we only build uh, x86 because we don't have access to ARM builders. We don't do virtualized builds, so it's all uh, native builds, and we don't have access to ARM uh, machines at the moment. Um, and th that is something we, we've been wanting to do for, for a while now, uh, add multi-arch builds, add, add ARM as a second architecture. Um, it's hopefully coming soon. Um, but we still need to find an ARM builder to, to actually run those. Yeah, it, it, we could definitely do that. Um, it's just we have essentially decided not to pursue um, virtualized builds um, since all of our productized downstream builds are also native builds and we just don't want to do something that uh, essentially we can't use downstream. So all of this is also meant as uh, inspiration for, uh, for our colleagues within the OpenShift org to show them that you can use these tools to build, to build OpenShift or OKD instead of the ones we, we have internally. It's not meant to replace anything, but it's meant to kind of you know, show folks to, yes, we, we can change the build system and then see progress there, move forward. And with the Tekton tasks, it's just uh, the one reason why we chose Tekton is because it's so easy to share these tasks. There's Tekton bundles or catalogs that you can reference, and so the, the actual task YAML doesn't have to live in a local repository. You can just reference it, and the actual task definition or pipeline definition can live somewhere else. So that's really really flexible. Any other questions? All right, I think, um, thank you again for having us. <laughs>